Hey freshmen, in this video I'm going to be teaching you about sequences. So to begin with, let's start by identifying a sequence. So a sequence is a set of numbers with a pattern. You have two types of sequences. There is an arithmetic sequence and then there is a geometric sequence. So the arithmetic sequence has what's called a common difference. And a geometric sequence has what's called a common ratio. So I'll go more into detail in example one. And know that the symbol for common difference we will use is D. So D is equal to the common difference and R will represent our common ratio. So let's start with an arithmetic sequence. So an arithmetic sequence is the following. In other words, you have to find the pattern. So notice that the first term here is three. So you call that a sub one. The second term is five. You call that a sub two. The third term is seven and so forth. So let's find the pattern. So to get from three to five, you obviously add two. To get from five to seven, you add two. To get from seven to nine, you add two. To get from nine to 11, you add two. So notice that our pattern is the same. It's plus two every single time. That's what makes the sequence arithmetic. So if you add or subtract by the same number every single time, that is arithmetic. So that's your common difference. So the common difference for this example is two. So in other words, D equals two. So remember, if you add or subtract by the same number every single time, that makes an arithmetic sequence. Now to find that two, it was easy because they're, they're small numbers, but sometimes you're going to have fractions or bigger numbers and to get the D or the common difference, you do the following. You subtract the second term minus the first. You subtract the third term minus the second. You subtract the fourth term minus the third and you subtract the fifth term minus the fourth. And that's how you get the common difference. Now, let's say I ask you for the next three terms. So I ask you to find, so this was the first term, second, third, fourth, fifth. So let's say I'm asking you for the sixth term, seventh term, and eighth term. So obviously you'll just follow the pattern. So 11 plus two is 13, 13 plus two is 15, 15 plus two and 17. So we just found our sixth term, seventh term and eighth term. Now let's say I asked you for the 50th term. So of course, if you keep the pattern going on and on and on until you get to the 50th term, you will get it, but there's a short way. So to get the 50th term, you do, you use what's called the nth term or the explicit rule or the explicit formula. So you would find this on the formula chart, but since you don't have one, let me write it down for you. So for, so for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence, you have to use the following formula. So here's how you read it. A sub N is equal to a sub one plus n minus one times d, which is the difference. So let's talk about all of these variables and what they mean. The a sub one represents the first term in the sequence. So in this problem, it's three. The n represents the term number. So since we're trying to find the 50th term, we're gonna plug in 50 for n. And of course, D is equal to the common difference, so the pattern. So now that you know that, let's go ahead and find our explicit rule or our nth term. So again, this formula has two names. It can be called the explicit rule or it can be called the nth term, the formula that helps you find a term in the future. 
Now, so let's go ahead and find the explicit rule. So a sub n, again, a sub one is the first term, which is three. Bring down the n minus one. And of course the d, which is the common difference was two, because it was plus two every single time. So let's simplify the following equation and let's get our explicit rule. So notice that this two has to be distributed to everything inside the parentheses. So two times n is two n. 2 times negative 1 is minus 2, and bring down your positive 3. Combine the like terms and you will be done. Bring down the 2n, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So here is our simplified explicit rule, or our simplified nth term. Now I asked you guys to find the 50th term. So to do that, you're going to plug in 50 for n. So if you simplify that, you get two times 50, which is 100. 100 plus one is 101. So again, we found the 50th term by plugging into our explicit rule or the nth term. Now let me show you example number two. So let's first identify if it is an arithmetic sequence. So to get from, obviously the first term is 33, second term is 29, and so forth. So let's figure out the pattern. To get from 33 to 29, you subtract 4. To get from 29 to 25, you subtract 4. To get from 25 to 21, you subtract 4. And from, to get from 21 to 17, you subtract 4. Since the pattern is the same, we have a common difference, which is negative 4. So we subtract four every single time. So remember, this is arithmetic because for arithmetic sequences, you either add or subtract by the same number every single time. Now, let's find the explicit rule for this problem. So remember, a sub n is equal to a sub one plus the quantity n minus one times the difference. So let's plug it in. A sub 1 is our first term, which is 33. N stays N for right now. And D, the common difference, is negative 4. So times negative 4. So let's simplify. Let's distribute the negative 4 to everything inside the parentheses. So negative 4 times N is negative 4N. Negative 4 times negative 1 is plus 4. And of course, bring down the 33. Combine your like terms, and here is the explicit rule. Now, if I ask you guys to find a term in the future, let's say a sub 10, you will plug in 10 for n. So do the math, negative four times 10 is negative 40 plus 37. So the third, the 10th term will be negative three. So again, if you keep this pattern going all the way to the third term, you should get negative three. So now that you are okay with arithmetic, go ahead and try the following and then answer part A and part B. So pause the video and then come back once you are done. So given this sequence, find the nth term. So in other words, the formula that's gonna help us find terms in the future. So let's start by first finding the common difference. So to get from negative 12 to negative eight, you add four. To get from negative eight to minus four, you add four. To get from negative four to zero, you add four. The pattern is the same, you add four every single time. So that is a common difference of four, which tells you your sequence is arithmetic. Now remember, these numbers are pretty small. So if um, you have a fraction or a decimal or bigger numbers, you would do the following. You would do the second term minus the first term. You would do the third term minus the second term. And you would do the fourth term minus the third term. So negative eight plus 12 is four. Negative four plus eight is four. And zero minus negative four is four. And that's how you can verify that your answer is correct. Now let's go back to part A. Let's find the nth term. So again, the formula is a sub n is equal to a sub one 
plus the quantity n minus one times the difference. So let's substitute. A sub one is our first term, which is negative 12. And the difference is positive four. Let's simplify. Four times n is four n. Four times negative one is negative four. Bring down the minus 12. Let's combine the like terms. And here is our nth term or our explicit rule. Now let's use that to solve for part B. So let's find the 50th term. So A sub 50. Now let's substitute 50 every time we see an N. So four times 50 is 200 minus 16, you get 184. So the 50th term is 184. So now that we discuss arithmetic, now let's go to geometric sequences. So geometric sequence is a sequence that you get whenever you multiply by the same number every time. So in this sequence, our first term is three, second term, our first term is one, second term is three, third term is nine, fourth term is 27. So let's find the pattern. To get from one to three, you have to multiply by three. To go from three to nine, you also multiply by three. To get from nine to 27, you also multiply by three. So for geometric, you have to multiply every single time to get to the next number. That's what's called a common ratio. So the common ratio here is three because we multiply every single term to get the next one. Now let's find the explicit rule or the nth term. So this is geometric, so the formula is different. So for geometric, you use the following. A sub n is equal to a sub one times r to the power of n minus one. So if you identify your sequence to be geometric, you have to use the following formula. So let's talk about it. A sub one is obviously the first term. R is the common ratio and n will be the term number. And then a sub n will be the actual term itself. So let's go ahead and find the explicit rule for example three. So again, the first term in this sequence is one. The r in this sequence is three. And a stays in, so bring it down. There is nothing to simplify for geometric, so you are done right here. Now let's use the following to find the ninth term in the sequence. So a sub nine will be equal to one times three to the power of nine minus one. So if we simplify that, we get one times three to the power of eight. And then you would do the following on the calculator, three to the eighth power. So three to the power of eight is equal to 6,561. And don't forget that you had the one in the front. Not that it changes anything, but you do need the one there. And of course, one times 6,561, you get 6,561. So for example four, let's identify we have an arithmetic or geometric sequence. So let's find the pattern. To go, to go from 96 to 48, you're going down, so you are decreasing. So let's subtract those, see what the pattern is. So let's check to see if it's arithmetic first. So if you do 48 minus 96, you should get the same when you do 24 minus 48. And if you do 12 minus 24. So let's see if this is arithmetic first. So 48 minus 96. That gives you negative 48. I feel like I should know that without a calculator. And of course, 24 minus 48 is negative 24. 12 minus 24 is negative 12. 
So notice that this pattern here is not the same. Therefore, it is not arithmetic. So that means it must be geometric. So let me erase this. Let's test to see if it is geometric. So remember, I told you guys that geometric is whenever you multiply the first term to get to the second term and so on. So notice that our first term is 96 and our second term is 48. So our numbers are decreasing. So that means that you have to multiply by a ratio or a fraction. So you do the following to get the number. You take your second term divided by the first. You take your third term divided by the second. You take your fourth term divided by the third term and your ratio should be the same. So 48 divided by 96 is one half. 24 divided by 48 is also one half. 12 divided by 24 is also one half. So the pattern here is times one half every single time. Now, I'm sure some of you saw that at the very beginning, you basically just divide by two. But remember, for geometric, we're only multiplying. And since our numbers were decreasing, we are multiplying by a fraction. So we're multiplying by a half every single time. Therefore, this is a geometric sequence. So let's find the nth term, or in other words, the explicit rule. So a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Let's plug it in. a sub 1 is the first term, which is 96. The r is 1 half, and the exponent will be n minus 1. And remember, for geometric, there's nothing to simplify. You are done right here. Now, let's use this explicit rule to find the 10th term. So we're doing a sub 10. We are substituting a 10 every time we see a n. So we have 96 times 1 half to the power of 9. So let's do PEMDAS. So let's do um, exponent first. There's nothing in the parentheses needs help. So 1 half to the 9th power. Just put 0.5 to make it easier. 1 half to the ninth power, you get a decimal. Let me see. Then we're going to multiply that decimal by, by 96. So let me just go ahead and multiply it right now. So that times 96 leaves you with 0.1875. So the tenth term is 0.1875. Now go ahead and try the following. Pause the video and then come back. So in this problem, we are identifying if the given sequence is arithmetic or geometric, and then we're finding the 15th term. So let me check to see if this is arithmetic first. So I'm going to subtract the second term minus the first term. I'm going to subtract the third term minus the second term. I'm going to subtract the third term minus the fourth term minus the third term. And let's see what we get. So negative 10 minus three, you get negative 13. So to get from here to here, we're subtracting 13. Negative 23 plus 10, you get negative 13. So that means that to go from negative 10 to negative 23, you subtract 13. And the last one, negative 36 plus 23 is also minus 13. So notice that the pattern is minus 13. Therefore, this is arithmetic. And by the way, I know it's spelled just like arithmetic, but you have to say arithmetic if you are talking about sequences. So we know that our common difference is negative 13. So let's answer the question now. Let's find the 15th term. So let's use our formula for arithmetic. So a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus the quantity n minus 1 times the difference. So let's substitute. a sub 1 is 3. 
the difference is negative 13 so times negative 13 so let's simplify negative 13 times n is negative 13 n negative 13 times negative 1 is plus 13 bring down the plus 3 go ahead and combine your like terms here's our explicit rule but let's answer the question the question is asking for the 15th term So substitute 15 every time you see it in. Use your calculator and do the math. So negative 13 times 15. And then you add 16. So negative 195. Negative 195 plus 16. Negative 179 is our answer. So the 15th term is negative 179. So that is the end of the sequence lesson for today. So go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe down below.